Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to just work on the easiest of the derivative rules again, the power rule. We're gonna step it up just a notch just to make sure you remember different ways of seeing exponents in disguise. So for starters, I'd like you to do these two problems as review, hit pause and work those out now. So here's the answer to the first one. Remember when you're doing the power rule, you take your exponent and multiply by the coefficient and then subtract one for the exponent, okay? So three times three would give me nine, subtract one and get the x squared, okay? On the next one, I just threw in some fractions there to torture you because you get a lot of fractions in this class, so you gotta get used to it. So on the next one, you probably got the first term, no trouble. The second term, again, remember, just multiply three times three halves, which is just three times three, and then divide by the two. No big deal, get used to it. And the derivative of the last one is just one third. Hopefully you got that review from yesterday. All right, so today, it doesn't look much different, right? It looks kind of the same. However, the trick for this is this term here and this one here, we can't do a power rule on those because it's in the denominator of a fraction. But I'm sure you remember that there's another way to rewrite it. So when you write this problem down in your homework, I wouldn't even write it like this. Immediately, when you write the problem, take this x here and move it up and make it x to the negative 1. Take the 5x squared. The 5 has to stay there. I can't move that. But the x squared, I can move up and make it x to the negative 2. So when you write the problem down, write the problem like this. 3, whoops, I did it again. Got confused with my technology. Got to remember to hit buttons. So I would rewrite it 3x to the negative 1. And then 2 fifths x to the negative 2. Okay, pay attention to your notation. You did some math there, but you still haven't done the derivative yet. Now do the next step and find the derivative. So hit pause and see if you can find the derivative, the next step, all by yourself. Okay, let's see how you did. The first three terms, those were all normal. So two times five halves is fives is five, subtract one. The derivative of seven x is seven, and the derivative of a constant is zero. That brings us to the new stuff. Still use the same rule. Negative one times three is negative three x to the subtract one, and you should have said negative two. Now we're not gonna leave it like that, but for now that's good. Do the next one, next term, negative two times two fifths, that's gonna be a negative four fifths x to the subtract one, and you get negative three. Now, most of the time, this is mathematically correct, but most of the time, this would be a multiple choice question on the AP exam, and you're not gonna leave negative exponents. So if any of the terms have a negative exponent, then you're just gonna take that piece and move it back down into the denominator. So my final answer, the 5x is fine, the 7 is fine. I can't go moving coefficients. Coefficients have to stay where they are. So I still have a negative 3 right where it is, but I'm going to move the x to the bottom and make it an x squared. And the 4 fifths has to stay the way it is also, but the x to the negative 3, I'll move that to the bottom and make it an x cubed. Okay? So now I'd like you to compare the way the original problem looked to the way our answer looks. Okay, so go all the way back to the top. An x to the first on the bottom basically becomes an x squared on the bottom. An x squared on the bottom becomes an x cubed on the bottom. Okay, you're going to get used to these patterns and expect this because we're going to do this a lot this year. Okay, this one is another thing that just, it really just requires you to rewrite the problem before you begin. And you're gonna rewrite it using some stuff that you learned in algebra that you may not remember. So for this one, you just have to rewrite, you have to remember that the square root, the square root of a number is the same as x to what power? The square root of x 
it's is the same as x to the hopefully you're saying it in your mind at least same as the x to the one half power okay and if i have something like the cube root of x squared something like that that's the same as x to the two-thirds power now if you forget which number goes where then try to remember it like this the root is down low the root of a tree is down low so the root goes on the bottom down low okay so using that to do this problem we just have to rewrite it before we get started so when you write the problem down i wouldn't even write it like this i would immediately write it as negative 2 x to the 1 half this next term is 4 x to the 1 third cube root is the same as 1 third and this one's minus 3 x to the 2 fifths now again common mistake people forget to actually still do the calculus so all we did right now was rewrite the equation and that's why it's important to always pay attention to your notation okay we rewrote the equation but we still need to find the derivative so now treat this problem just like the last one hit pause work it out on your own and make sure you write your final answer with positive exponents okay let's see how you did the first term we multiply we get a negative one x to the subtract one visualize a common denominator treat that one like two over two and you get negative one half plus multiply we're going to get four thirds x to the subtract one treat the one like a three thirds and you get negative two thirds minus two fifths times three is just six fifths x to the subtract one in the form of five over five and you get negative three fifths now again rewrite your negative exponents as positives so the negative one stays where it is you can move it out front or on top but it's just a negative number the x to the one half goes to the bottom okay the four thirds has to stay where it is but the x to the two thirds goes to the bottom six fifths stays the way it is move the three fifths to the bottom now if that's not the final answer then it is possible they could write the answer back in radical form the way it started so it's possible for example that this x to the one half it could be a square root of x again okay it's fine the way this is because the directions will prob probably just say write your answer with positive exponents but you need to be warned on a multiple choice test that it could also go back into radical form this means the same thing okay hopefully you're hanging in there hopefully that's going well all right this next part seems really weird but it's actually very easy take the time and read the directions and i'll wait for you for a minute okay they do this a lot on the ap exam where they use variables but they say that the variables are actually going to be treated as constants what that means is treat these variables like numbers okay and the problems will get harder and harder so let me show you what i'm what i mean for number five when i find the derivative of the first term no big deal multiply and subtract but on the next one i'm going to treat this b like it's a number which basically means just bring it down so two times three b is going to be six b and then still subtract one from the exponent okay here 1 times 5c is just 5c subtract 1 from the exponent it's gone so basically those variables if they're constants they're just going to be brought down all right let's look at the next one 4 times a negative 4a is a negative 16a subtract 1 from the exponent 3 times 5b would be 15b subtract 1 from the exponent and 2 times 4a would be a negative 8a x to the first so treat the constants or treat the variables like constants only if they say you can 
In other words, you're not doing the power rule to them. You're only doing the power rule to the X's. That's what it means when it says differentiate with respect to X. So hopefully today was a quick and easy lesson. Good luck with your assignment. Um, oops, actually, I have one more, but I think you've already done this. The only thing that's going to be different is the word coordinates. Hold on, sorry. Okay, The word coordinates is all that's going to be slightly different on this one. So let me work this out. I thought I was done, but I'm not. I have one more. Okay, we're looking for the points where the tangent is horizontal. Hopefully you remember from the last lesson that horizontal tangent means that the slope is zero and another word for slope is derivative. So I'm going to find the derivative and I'm going to look for when this equals zero. Solve that, subtract six on both sides, divide by negative two and I get that x is three. Well in the past we just stopped there. Now what I'm going to do since it said the word coordinates that means I now know my x coordinate is 3. I just now need to do a little bit more and find the y coordinate. So where am I going to find that? Look all around at the problem, look around, look around, and I can find it right here. Plug in that x is 3 right there, and you'll be able to find the y coordinate that goes with it. So when x is 3, y will equal, it's y on the original function, it's not y on the derivative. So y will equal negative 9, plus 6 times 3, 18, minus 5. So what is that? Negative 14 plus 4, that's going to be, sorry, negative 18 plus 18, that'll be a 4. So now you have the coordinates, okay? So what does that mean? This is a negative parabola. Here's the original function. The slope is horizontal right here, and the coordinates of that point right there are 3, 4. Okay, Hello. good luck with your assignment. <laughs> See you soon. Don't come back.